Lord God Almighty, perfect in power, love, and majesty. We thank Thee, O God, for this morning. We thank You for the breath of life. We thank You that before You there is no other, and that none can stand against Your refiner's fire. We thank Thee, O oh God, for the breath of life and for having been awakened from our slumber, whether it was at 4 a.m. this morning or if we are still even clearing our eyes of mist right now. You are a holy and an awesome and perfect God. And so for these things, O oh God, we invoke thy holy name because there is power in your name there is healing in your name you know god as we invoke thy name we seek thy face that after this worship experience we will have been transformed into your very image so that when people see us doing the work of Christ, that in us they might see your Son. We ask now, O oh God, that you will tabernacle and dwell with us over these next few minutes, for a thousand years are like a watch in the night to thee. Bless those who've come this morning in this small skeleton crew. But God, bless enormously those who are in hospitals and prisons and penitentiaries. Those who sleep on cold grates. Those who knock on food covered doors this morning. Let them know that you are a true and everlasting and eternal God we will be certain to give you glory as we ask these things in the only name truly worth calling. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Life is sometimes unfair, but God is good all the time. I'm so glad I'm alive this morning. It did not have to work out that way, but God was gracious to me, and I'm here with, with friends and brothers and sisters, one of whom I love dearly, uh, Commissioner Ken Lawrence, who is a dear friend, a prayer partner. We shoot scripture at each other. We talk basketball. We talk craft beer. We talk all kinds of things. I'm allowed to say that in the church of the living God uh, because we've found out through all of this how important it is to be human. We're all human. We're all frail flesh. You and I have gotten closer to each other, Ken, uh, during COVID. In fact, you were the first person who sent me a text way back in March and you said, pray for the county. And when the commissioner of the county, you know, the first African-American commissioner in 300 years. And when and you when say, say, pray, pray, pray county, county, I knew, I knew, I knew that was something serious. serious. And you sent me another note seconds, seconds later that said, this coronavirus thing is going to hit us hard. How have you been in all of this, Ken? Well, first, Pastor Mitchell, um, Marshall, thank you for having me here this morning. My heart is full <laughs> to be, this is my first time in the church in quite some time, so I'm just filled up. The music and just to be here is, is so special. Um, when you talk about March, it feels like it was a year ago. 2020 has been a long, tough year here in Montgomery County um, and across the country. But you've been a blessing to me. You've been a blessing to this community. Uh, I would test it positive for COVID in May. You were beside me when I was tested. Um, I was tested through the Black Doctors Consortium. That was way back when they weren't testing people. 
you know, the county was struggling to stand up testing and, and you brought it to Pottstown. I mean, Dr. Stanford encouraged me to get a test. And I said, I don't have any symptoms. And she said, I'm a doctor, I'm telling you to get a test. And I got those results back. Prayerfully, I was asymptomatic. Um, but unlike our president, I did not take from that, do not fear COVID. Um, I'm so thankful that no one, my family, coworkers, no one around me was testing positive. Um, but it's real and, and it's hit the black and brown communities particularly hard, which we knew that. Um, and, and that makes me angry because we knew those disparities were there. We haven't fixed those disparities. So of course, and I've been very clear and intentional about it. If your life was hard before COVID, your life got harder during COVID, whether you had it or not. Um, I think we're at a moment in time now where we, we need to get through this, but we need to fix those disparities. We've all known that they have been there. And they're historic. Historic. Disparities. This is not historic. new for us. We know that the roots of these disparities are rooted deeply and they're enmeshed in this country's slavery fabric. And we are still, in my mind, we are still fighting the Civil War, right? Breaking away from this insidious racism that is just a toxin in our, the body of our democracy. How do we get at those disparities? We try it as a church. We don't have the scale. Uh, yesterday, we distributed 66 boxes of food to families. You know the heart that I have for hungry families and for people in need. We're testing with, through Dr. Stanford. She's going to be here on Tuesday from 4 to 7 p.m. She's the triple threat. It's going to be flu shot free, COVID test free, and then antibody test free. And we're going to be doing voter registration because we know the church, if the church is going to be relevant, We've got to be out there doing these things today. How do we get at it as a society? You have scale in Montgomery County, but, but there, you don't have enough to deal with everybody in Pennsylvania. Some of these things have been embedded in our public policy, in our federal laws, from Social Security, that originally Social Security, domestic workers could not benefit from that. That was us. Us. That was us. Um, you know, I, I've even had my own reawakening. People talk about reparations, say, oh, well, you weren't a slave. I didn't own a slave. I didn't do that. These things have been built in. The GI Bill that African-American soldiers couldn't benefit from. Redlining. There, there are so many things. So, you know, you know, I'm a, we, we got to tear it up. Yeah. We've got to tear it up. Um, I have been heartened by our young people. Our young people, I think they're going to get it right. Um, I don't think they're going to accept even some of the things that we've accepted yeah. in our lifetime. They've, they've made us, you and I are about the same age. Um, I think I'm a little younger. Yeah. Little, <laughs> you and Josh, man, keep doing this thing on me. I told him the other day he was 50. He's like, I'm um, not, he doesn't want to hear I'm that. I'm not 50. He does not. I was like, dude, you're 49 and 11 twelfths. Get over yourself, right? There are things and words you and I grew up saying, which a younger generation, your children will not stand for. And so we also have to do our own internal work. Do you think this country has the guts to do the internal work that it's going to have to do? And it's work for us as believers in Christ. It's the work of righteousness, right? When we see injustice, we don't just say, well, our family didn't benefit from slavery. I wasn't here. I haven't done anything. If there is an injustice as Christians and believers, we are duty bound by the blood of Christ and our our moral obligation to God and our sisters and brothers to address it. Do you think we have the gut to address these issues? I think we have to have it, and I, I think we do. And I think even in the past couple months, we have to have tough conversations with people in our lives. Um, you know, friends who, who don't understand, who, who don't understand because um, they look at us and they say, okay, well, you, you guys are doing fine. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it's all... It's all good. And, and I, I've been having those conversations and I'm seeing them start to have. I think we've had an awakening um, that, that really started, quite frankly, with, with that police officer's knee on George Floyd's throat for over eight minutes and for people to see that. That's happened before. We just haven't seen it. Right, right. Do, we've got work to do in the church. The church has not always been a welcoming, inviting, healing, and wholesome place for everybody, right? And you go to church, oftentimes there's the in crowd, and then there are the outsiders. 
you go to church and there are those who, well, that person falls into these boxes that I'm comfortable with, right? In a black church, you know, that person's black, check box. That person's straight, check box. That person has uh, social access, check box. Those are, that's so easy. But that's not the work of Jesus Christ, right? Because when we see his work, he finds himself around a woman who's been married multiple times and is living with a woman who is not, living with a man who is not her husband. He finds himself with a woman who violates all of the, the strictures of late ancient Judaism and who touches him. He finds himself in the company of Romans and Greek Hellenized Jews who would not have been very accepted at the, the tax temple. collector. Tax collector, <laughs> right? And I love the yeah. fact that you're an elected official and you know scripture, <laughs> right? How do we as a church, because it's fascinating, the Black Lives Matter kids, quote unquote, they're not in church yeah. for the most part. They're outside, but they are healing this country in a way that many of my colleagues in ministry and even I have not been on the front lines working and agitating and healing. How does the church, you've got a 16 year old son, how does the church reach your son? We've got to stop judging. We, we judge even as Christians. Um, you know, we talk a lot about food insecurity. Uh, food insecurity is not people who are on food stamps. It means you make too much for that, but you don't make enough to buy enough food. And that's why we have so many food pantries here in Montgomery County. And there's some people here in this church. It's not what you think it is. Right. People make decisions. They want to live in a good school district. So they're paying too much for the apartment or the house that they're in, and then they're sacrificing food for that. That's here. We got to open our eyes. We got to look and we got to reach out. It's, it's and when COVID started, when the schools closed in March, we have 22 school districts in Montgomery County. Some of our school districts pivoted very quickly to online learning. Three of our school districts had to figure out how to feed their kids because a third of their students in those schools got two meals a day at school through the free lunch and breakfast program. So they're not, they're not thinking about trying to get them Chromebooks. They're thinking about how do we, how do we get them food? We're the second wealthiest county in Pennsylvania but we had three school districts who had to figure out how to feed their, feed their students. We gotta talk about these things. It can't be all about just the good things. We've gotta talk about the tough things too. And how do we fix that? Because I don't think anybody thinks that that's right. So I, you know, people give me feedback on our worship services. And for some people, what you and I are doing right now isn't worship. For me, this is absolutely worship. We've talked about people loving, We've talked about food insecurity. These are all, Jesus dealt with food insecurity when he meets the people out in the desert, in the wilderness, right? He encounters a little boy, you know, who's got fish and loaves, and he meets the need of people. So he's dealing with food insecurity. How now does your faith inform your work in a way that it didn't in March? I really feel that my faith has always informed my work, and we've talked about this. You know, I've always been in and around politics. Um, I, have, I have a degree in political science from Temple. I have a master's in public relations, uh, public administration from the University of Penn. Um, I wasn't ready in my 30s to be a public servant. It would have been about me. You know, I used to strut around saying I was a self-made man. I did this. I got this job. I got. I'm I look, sure you I, didn't I look, say that to your dad. Um, <laughs> I know your dad. You didn't say you were self-made. But... I, I, I thought I was making it all. I was making my moves, yeah. doing my things. Um, it wasn't until my faith strengthened, and so this is what it's all about. Um, you know, Matthew. The, we have people in prison. You know, we have people hungry, we have people sick. That's really what county government is about to me. We need more resources to do it and nobody wants to pay more in taxes and, and, and we wanna fix these things. But I think I had all the foundations to start. I had the, the educational background, I had the contacts. I didn't have the spiritual strength. And I certainly could not have gotten through this year so far without the Lord. I'm going near a third rail. You and I have not talked about this, but we've talked about this. You had some challenges, you and Val had some challenges with the third member 
of the, of, of the commission. How, is, how are we in these tense, tempestuous times, how do we love enemy, adversary, agitator? How do we love proud boys? How do we love the president? I told you I was going near the third rail on this one. Then so, we'll get the easy, easier stuff. You know, I, I prayed for the president. Right I, I prayed for the president when he got his diagnosis. Um, you know, I would not wish that on on anyone. Uh, my, you know, my colleague. He's not my colleague. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, he's, a, he's a fellow commissioner. He's a fellow commissioner. We 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 share that. I have always reached out to him uh, when I became a commissioner. I said, let's meet for a cup of coffee. We met. I said, you set up the next one. That was three years ago. We didn't have the next one. Yeah. Um, but I've always been respectful. I felt that what he did in that moment in time, you know, on June second, when when cities were burning, to just throw gasoline on the fire um you know I've, I've really struggled with that i have not had to see him much we, we have in public meetings but it's very perfunctory but i need to i need to pray on that because i definitely am not reaching out like i reached out before because i feel that he showed a disdain for me as a man and as a people um that that i am still that i'm still quite frankly wrestling with. with yeah that's real because our face you know paul continues to tell us that we, you know, we, we wrestle, we struggle, we contend with powers and principalities in high places, yeah. you know, so keep struggling. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't do things to get likes on Facebook yeah. and to get retweets, and I think we have too much of that um, among the elected class, but among everything. So, you know, we have a responsibility as public officials, and you're a public official to, to represent and try to heal, not harm. Um, yeah. We've got an election. It's right around the corner. Um, I'm sure you're feeling confident and revved up and energized. Voting, I am voting in person. I am going to take my chair at 11.59 p.m. the day before and I'm going to get in line. I'm going to be the very first person to vote at my polling place. And I'm going to push with this long African-American finger. I'm going to press the buttons that I want to press. I'm healthy. I'm going to be PP down and up. And I'm going to be socially distanced. So I'm not worried about the secret envelope. What is going on with the elections? I know there are tons of challenges that are coming in from the right and from the Trump administration. And they're losing them. And they're losing, they're losing them. The other, thanks yeah. to Josh and yep. others and so many others and you all. What should our people know about voting right now? So we really have two elections now in, in Pennsylvania. We have the in-person election and we have the mail-in election. And this is the first year that, that Pennsylvania has had a mail-in election. So I say that there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation out there. Misinformation is that people just don't know because it's new. Disinformation is the president and some of his folks just trying to scare people. So I salute people for whether they want to vote by mail or whether they want to vote in person. Just make sure you vote. But when it comes to the it comes to the mail in, um, you know, people applied for it back in July. The ballot's not approved until September. Um, we have 200,000 ballots that have been mailed out now. So I would encourage Montgomery County residents, take a deep breath. A lot of people have gotten their ballot in the past couple of days, or you're going to get it mid next week. We have 16 locations that you can return that ballot if you don't want to put it back in the post office. Um, if you're planning to vote in person, we're going to have a, over 300 polling locations. We had to consolidate for the primary due to the pandemic. but. Every Montgomery County voter will receive a letter letting them know where their polling location is. You can go to our website to find out where to drop those ballots off. Just want everybody to take a breath. Take a breath. This is all going to work out. We have spent over a million dollars to, to count those ballots as quickly as possible. But you mentioned as well, if you are voting by mail, you'll have two envelopes there. You'll have what they call the privacy envelope. You have to put your ballot in that and then put it in the return envelope, sign the return envelope. 
you'll hear a lot about naked ballots, which somebody needs to write a song about that. <laughs> I'm sure somebody um, already has. <laughs> so yeah. if you do not put your vote into that privacy envelope, we cannot count it. Um, we were able to count them in the primary, and we, we estimate that there would have been five to 6,000 votes that we would not have counted because they did not have that envelope. So please make sure that you use that, use that envelope. But if everyone would just take a breath, this is, this is going to work out. We, yeah. we, are, we are on top of it. Uh, ballots are being mailed by the 10th. They're working today. They're working on the Sabbath to, to get them out. Nobody's going to get a ballot tomorrow because it's a holiday. But, but we're there. But I think people, people have been anxious to vote in this election for four years yeah. now, right? Um, I love the energy. <laughs> yeah, there's, right? there's a lot of energy. And you might not sense all of the energy and see all of the energy, but there is this substratum of energy that mm -hmm. is just... A passion. It's a passion. passion. People are highly and motivated. They're standing in lines all across the country. Maybe the great giant has been awakened. Yeah. Before I, before I let you go, man, thank you so much for being here with us today. There have been so many silent, quiet witnesses for me in my life during this time of small people who've done small things and sometimes even big things that have helped change the course of my life, my ministry, our ability as, doc, uh, as the uh, COVID-19 consortium to, to the Black Doctors Consortium to deal with things. Are there any small witnesses, secret witnesses that you have of somebody or something that just really reminded you that we have a loving God who's watching out for us? So my grandmother, who has been passed for years now, um, I, I didn't want to be in public office. You know, I wanted to be the man behind the man. I didn't feel the need to step out front. She always said I was going to be elected one day. She always said that. And I thought my grandmother was a little crazy with that. Um, she was a praying woman. I still pray to her, for her. Um, she saw it, you know, she saw it. Um, Marshall, you know, you, you'll call me or, or send me a text, and it's always right on time. And I've said to you, how did you know, how did you know I need it? this day and you said to me once you said you know that wasn't me right <laughs> <You know? laughs> <And you're, laughs> and, um, yeah. so just those just those moments along the way I, I'll tell you in June I was running I'm a runner and I, I was running from my house and this was Maude Arbery really hit me because yeah. there's been times in my life when you know I've been called the n-word out of out of a car and gone but so this is you know, this is June, I'm running about a mile from my house. And I was at a light and a truck pulled up. I could see it and the window went down and the person yelled, hey, I froze. I didn't, I didn't, I thought, I thought, I had no, I no, I had looked. It was one of my son's teachers from, from the high school, one of his favorite teachers, my older son who had graduated. He said, Ken Lawrence, you're the man. Thanks for what you're doing. And that adrenaline went, but in that first second, you saw the pickup truck. You I saw, saw the pickup guy, truck, right? And this that's a natural response with what we're going through yeah. right now. But, <laughs> but you're he the was man. a blessing. You're the man, Ken. Thanks for all you're doing. Um, and and drove on. So those little moments like that. You know, we have our trolls, we have our deniers, we have our haters. Uh, I'm just gonna be respectful. I represent all the people, whether you voted for me or not, no matter how you're voting, we're trying to make sure that your vote gets counted. And, you know, we know that there's, this is all going to work out. Yeah. All right. It if does. it doesn't all work out here, <laughs> it's all going to work out. You represent your grandmother, you represent Jesus Christ, and you're representing both of them well, man. Keep doing what you're doing. We love you. I pray for you every day. I go back over our text messages and read them. Uh, and I did that yesterday, knowing that you would be here today. So I'm grateful to you. It was because of you that I called about 30 other people, closed the church down immediately and told people, stop what you're doing, go to the supermarket, buy supplies. This thing is going to be more serious. Keep being that harbinger. Keep being that, that parakeet down in, the, uh, in, in, the, in the, the, the mind, so to speak. 
and God will watch out for you because Ken Lawrence, you're the man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank Let's you. pray. Almighty and eternal God, thank you, Lord, for this conversation, this time to share between brothers, but to also share with other people about our civic duty, about our emotional and mental health. And thank you, God, for reminding us in ways small that we are the man, we are the woman, we are the people who you're using at this time. And God, even when church does not feel and sound like what we expect it to feel and sound like, remind us in your maturity that the Holy Spirit does not ask for permission but chooses and does and wends his way through situations in a way that only he knows why. So we thank God for Ken, we thank God for Ken's family, we thank God for the healing and restoration of his body that he was willing to be an example to this county and to this region. That it does not matter if you're a six foot four inch African American runner, that sometimes a little virus can take us down a notch and thanks be unto God it didn't take him out so we're grateful for this conversation and for this time of sharing and friendship it is in Jesus name that we pray amen amen, amen. amen. and amen thanks for coming by today man thank you I appreciate you thank I'll, you I'll take your mic and you okay. can you're you're free to free yeah you're free to, to do whatever you want to do thanks. man thank you let me ask you this. Eagles today, Eagles Steelers. It's your only flaw, man. It's your, Eagles it's your only flaw. Eagles. Eagles. Okay. Eagles. All, all the right. way. We're all coming right. we're coming back. And once you come over there, then we can truly be brothers. <laughs> Get out of here. All right, brother. Take care of yourself. God bless you. We had a uh, we had a great time with Ken here. I'm so thankful for him and for his being here today. He's a blessing uh, to everybody. And as soon as he gets his football situation together, he'll be, you know, he'll be the public servant that his grandmother wanted him to be. Um, we had a great day here on campus yesterday. Our seniors played parking lot bingo. And it's one thing to buy a Catholic church, but it is a totally different thing to actually have parking lot bingo and to become a Catholic Baptist church because Catholics are professional bingoologists. Uh, but the seniors were out there. They had a great time. I saw the pictures. Uh, I saw people social distanced. Uh, they were out there in wheelchairs. They had a great time. We've got to do as much as we can to keep that fellowship going. I'm so grateful to God for Phyllis Jones and for Nate Jones uh, and Mom Schaefer and for Marie Sims and so many others who are keeping this going. Um, we, are, we have no group that is more important than our seniors. And so, so definitely stay attuned to that. And if you've got some seniors, get involved in what's going on. Just because the church is closed does not mean we're closed. We're very, very much open. In addition to that, we had First Fruits operating at exactly the same time. They were operating from 10 to 1. They distributed 66 baskets of food, boxes of food. Uh, and we still have about 30 more that are available. So if you know anybody who needs some help, additional help, uh, call the office. We'll arrange for it. We'll make sure that it gets into people's trunks and uh, t that we will continue to do the work of Jesus Christ. It is important for our church to do that. Uh, Brother Greg Watts is doing better. I talked to Eleanor several times this week. Keep Greg in your prayers. On Friday, we celebrated the homegoing service of Brother Terry Garant, uh, Annie Garant's uh, husband, who was a proud uh, Omega from Lincoln University, and we celebrated his homegoing. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a good experience. We're praying for Annie and her children and for the family. Annie is a fixture. She sings in the choir during so many funerals, and so she's helped so many of us mourn. So we're grateful to God that we have been able to be helpful to her at this time. Call her, send her a card, love her, support her. She's a really remarkable person. Uh, and there are so many who are in the house of mourning. We send our love and condolences to so many others who are, who are looking for uh, the healing of Jesus Christ right now. Uh, you heard uh, Holy, Holy, Holy uh, as our prelude from Victor Simonson, who was here last week. Uh, and I guess it got good to him. We got good to him. He got great to us. I got so much positive feedback about, uh, uh, but even before I get to your playing and your musicality, Victor, your nakedness, your transparency, uh, to hear black men talk about therapy, 
to talk about having people in your lives who you can talk to and you can just express yourself uh, and you've got a great wife, uh, Reverend, the Reverend Mrs. Simonson, uh, and she is a spiritual lady. You all will hear her preach at some point very soon. Uh, they're from Virginia. They're, they're both New Yorkers, but they wound up down in Dixie. And uh, he blessed us so much last week. He was on, uh, on the piano. He was on the Allen organ. He was on the Hammond. He sang. And it was just important for us to be in church. My mother asked, she said, can he open the organ up? I didn't even say that to you. Uh, she's a Presbyterian like you are. And I'm grateful to God that you did just open the organ, man, and just, just worship, uh, enter us and guide us into worship. Lauren is here, and Lauren knows she's one of my favorite people. She's here sharing with us this morning. So we've got a surfeit, S-U-R-F-E-I-T, of musical talent and godliness and holiness uh, and people who just worship God uh, without asterisk. Uh, they worship God without a mask, mm -hmm. so to speak. And so I'm just so grateful for, for your presence here. And we got a little skeleton crew. We're not going to be long this morning. I'm actually going to preach a text that, um, that Ken Lawrence sent me uh, from Isaiah, the 45th chapter, verse 3. He sent this to me back in March when we were really in the thick of it. And we're back in it. We're back in it, which is why we are testing here Tuesday, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. COVID-19, antibody testing, and flu shots. I'm going to get my flu shot. Uh, on Tuesday, we'll be here 4 to 7. Dr. Stanford and her medical angels are going to be here. Uh, and so we'll do that. We'll have a sermonic selection. Um, and Victor and Lauren are going to come right now. And uh, I won't be too long. You'll be back at your breakfast by 9.38ish, unless they do a little something more extraordinary with the music, which with the two of them, I would not doubt that. Um, but God bless you. And, and the camera, I know, is going to throw right to, right to the piano. slumber nor sleep. Oh, the Lord is my keeper. The Lord is thy shade. Upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. No, the sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night he shall preserve thy soul even forevermore my help my help my help all of my From whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, 
the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee, He will not slumber nor sleep. Oh, the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade. Upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. No, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. He shall preserve thy soul, even forevermore. My help, my help, my help, all of my help cometh from the Lord, my help, my help, my help, all of my help cometh from the Lord. Lift up mine eyes unto the hills, he is my strength. All of my help cometh from the Lord. Lift up mine eyes unto the hills. He is my strength. All of my help cometh from the Lord. My help. just met last night and I have no idea I'm not a musician but I have no idea how musicians do what Lauren and Victor just did until I think about God and when you're serving God and you're singing the Psalms uh, God does what God does very well um, from time to time we have technical problems just like from time to time you have problems at home with your Wi-Fi and signal and so we're trying to sort through some of the interference that we're receiving uh, but God's working on us and we're not alarmed um, by the challenges that that are presented here one day you'll see all that this takes uh, to get this done and the number of people who are doing what they can. Look, if you will, to this text that Ken sent me back, way back in March. I don't know how many years ago March was now, uh, but it was like 10 years ago. Um, but he sent this text to me at a time when I needed it to be reminded of things. And I have looked to this text 
any number of times since this pandemic has started during the time of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and so many other situations. But Isaiah 45, verse 3. And I needed this because I needed to know that there were things that God was doing that I was not aware of, that there had to be more to my life and more to what was going on than what I was able to see. I needed to know also that America could still be a remarkable idea and that we could continue through our own strength and through the grace of God to lurch toward the country that we can become. We are in the process of becoming. Uh, and Victor told me a few minutes ago that he played at the funeral service my namesake, uh, Thurgood Marshall. And uh, he talked about the, the Constitution being a living and breathing document, that it was not some dusty thing that was written in 1776 that was incapable of being applied to people now and in the future, but it was, it was a living and breathing document. And I like that because I like things that are alive because they can do course correction. Uh, and there is still the possibility of revelation and what they would become. And I felt like Ken's scripture to me at a time when I had grown desperate, when I had tired of seeing all the bad reports on the news, when I was tired of finding out that my friends had tested positive, when I was weary from finding out that Pastor Alan Waller had COVID-19, when I was tired about trying to figure out if my mother was sneaking out uh, to the post office during COVID, I was worn down and I thought, God, how am I going to keep going? And this text, Ken, really truly helped me. And some texts preach themselves. They really don't need that much illumination or elucidation, either one. And this text in Isaiah, Isaiah 45, verse 3, said, I will give you hidden treasures, riches, stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord the God of Israel who summons you. Almighty and eternal God, help us. Come Holy Spirit. Remind us that you are a God of secret and hidden places where there are riches and treasures, not material things, not carnal things, but there is the richness of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Remind us, O oh God, that we are not in this battle all alone and that we can lean upon the everlasting arm of Jesus Christ and you. And we pray now, O oh God, that someone might hear something which might compel them to ask, what must I do to be saved? Yes, it, it is in Jesus' name, name that we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. I had almost, I had almost given up. Given up. I had almost, almost fainted. Faint, faint. I had almost grown as exasperated as Ken was, as Ken was dealing with the work of government and not knowing whether or not the county could respond as fast as it could, if people had enough food, if school districts were going to be able to feed people, if school districts were going to be able to provide Chromebooks and computers for their students. I had almost given up. I had almost given up because I saw too many of my colleagues in ministry too concerned about lights, camera, action, and trying to get likes and looks on the internet at a time when the church should have put its chest out, understanding that we have power in Jesus Christ and gone to the streets. I had almost given up when I saw the muted voices of too many of our elected officials who were not there and present when people were out in the streets crying out for justice. I had almost given up because I know so many wealthy people who were making sure that their homes were well padded and that they had every creature comfort, but they were not thinking about their brothers and sisters. I had almost given up at times when I was tired and didn't feel like going out anymore to test anybody. I didn't feel like preaching anymore. I had almost given up because I was too preoccupied with looking at my own resources, trying to figure out Montgomery County's ability, and trying to figure out whether or not the mayor of Philadelphia would ever help Ala Stanford. I had almost given up until I started looking in the right places. When they sang that song, all of my help comes from 
the Lord. It is so easy in this material world for us to look for our bank accounts, for our social station, from our churches, from our families. It is so easy for us to look to everybody else and to forget that God is the author and finisher of our faith, and he is the giver of every good and perfect gift. All of the things that I have discussed already are finite. One day, Victor, your hands will not cooperate. Arthritis or something else will tell you the thrill is gone. Lauren, your voice will begin to crack. Ken, you will not be 6'4 and will not be able to run down the street. You'll have to walk on a walker or slow down. Marshall, I won't have a full-throated sermon ready every Sunday because we are not eternal. We are finite. But there is one who has no limitation. And if in the middle of the storm you have the audacity and the temerity to look to the one who controls the winds and the waves and to remind yourself that he looks out on the deep and says, peace, be still. This text, this Isaiah text was important for me because it says, I will give you hidden treasures. Riches stored in secret places, and that was helpful for me because at a time when I wondered if white America would ever show up and say anything about the death of African Americans, our white neighbors here right in Roslyn rallied to the side of this churches. Strangers who I had never met made masks. Some made masks with African print. Some people showed up. One woman who I met outside with a dog said, when you all were passing out food the other day. I didn't have food to pass out, but I wrote a $300 check and I said, ma'am, thank God for you because these people through God restored my faith and we must make sure that we never stereotype everybody and typecast everybody to fall into the, own, to the pit of our own faithlessness and hopelessness. We can drag other people down with us, but God has secret places, hidden places, things we don't know where we can find power and strength. I'll never forget when Barack Obama ran for president, most black folks said, what's his name? And most black folks weren't down for Barack Obama. Most black folks were Hillary Clinton people. And, and because black folks, many of us thought it was impossible given the shape and tenor of this country. We thought that it would be impossible for an African American to ever be elected president. But I remember those white college students out in Iowa and other places like that who found and heard in Barack Obama something that we had not seen in this country since Teddy Kennedy or even Bobby Kennedy. God has resources and people of which we know not. And in my own life, that's why I ask Ken, have there been any small secret under-examined places? And he talked about his grandmother who still speaks from eternity. He talked about his experience. Coming in this morning, he talked about his father. He talked about how I showed up at the right time because God, who owns the cattle on a thousand hills, has secret places and treasures that we know not of. And that is why we must truly be the beloved community because if I can't play, Victor can. If I can't sing, Lauren can. If I can't work a board, Gary Shepard can. We've got to remember that God has resources, and when we learn to be a community, God will reveal the hidden resources. Isaiah understood that. That's why he wrote, I will give you hidden treasures. Who doesn't want hidden treasures? He says, I will give you riches stored in secret places. That stored in secret places is important because we worship a God who knows what we need right now, but he knew it when we were yet in our mother's womb. He has stored up things that we will need for this journey, and so we must be faithful and hopeful and optimistic because our God has provided for us according to his riches and glory. He has stored things up for us that we know not of. We're not in this all by ourselves. Many of you said last week, that's the first time that we felt like we were in church 
since March. And that was exactly what many of you needed. Victor and I had been talking, and he just said I needed to come up. He needed to come up and play and be in church because he hadn't really been in a church context like this. And so do you see how our need, my need, Victor's need, all comes together in one place because we are in God's storehouse. We are in that place where God understands us. That's why it is so important for us to be in church because there is fellowship and there is community here. And if there is real community, when you are going through something, there is already somebody else who has been through a similar thing upon whom you can lean. And that is why we are told to help to bear one another's burdens because when we come to this storehouse, there is a richness that we find in our faith and in our community that we cannot find anywhere else other than in church. Someone walked in here this morning and I could see the tears in his eyes. He had not been here since early March and he needed to be in God's storehouse. Have you ever felt in the midnight hour that you need to be in God's storehouse? Have you ever felt when you feel exasperated you need to be in God's storehouse? God seeks to provide for us. And Salem, I don't know a church that God has provided for more than this church. You've Amen. been through federal bankruptcy court. You have been through trials. You've been through tribulations. Amen. You've been through the death of a young pastor. You've been through kicking a preacher out of church. You've been through people coming and people going. You've been through people walking out of church meetings, but God in his infinite grace and wisdom and God all alone has provided for us a loving place where we can grow and be who God would have us to be because we have hidden treasures in his storehouse. This text simply closes with God doing what God always does, reaffirming himself so that we are reaffirmed because he's our God. It closes by saying, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. I like that, summons you by name. So that you will know that I am... Trust God and try God, and he'll prove who he is. We know everybody else's name, but we don't call on God enough. And God, I am the Lord your God. I am a jealous God. He wants us to know that he is our God. So I like what he says by he summons you by name. The old, old Baptist used to say that it's a good thing that when Jesus got to Bethany and Lazarus had died, and it was an old Baptist story, and said, well, I'm just glad when he got there, he said, Lazarus, get up. Because if he had just said, get up, <laughs> everybody, everybody who had ever died, died would have gotten, gotten up. up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that is, that is how power in his name. So he is universally loving. But Chad and Lauren and Sierra, I am so glad that he summons us by our name. And in a time like this, every once in a while, I need God to call me Marshall. I don't want him to call anybody else. I want him to call me so that I have the power and the strength and the hope in humanity and in him to keep on going on. Salem, my brothers and sisters, my sisters and brothers, strangers, anybody else who might be watching or feeling today, this is your message. You might feel like giving up, but God's got storehouses. He's got riches. He's got hidden treasures. And I don't mean that stuff where you look at somebody and say, look at your neighbor and give him a holy high five and say, uh, neighbor, I'm going to get me an Escalade. Because that dumb Escalade, first of all, is too much debt. Mm -hmm. 
Second of all, it's going to be sitting on somebody's trash heap. And God is bigger than that. This is a God who neither slumbers nor sleeps. He calls you by his name. And you can rely upon him when there's nothing left and you feel like quitting. If you've joined us this morning and you know that you need a deeper relationship with God, there's only one way to the Father and that's through Jesus Christ, his son. So if you've been here with us and you felt the power of the Holy Spirit and you feel compelled to try God, don't worry about what are the Baptist traditions. Remember, remember the Baptist tradition, you had to walk down the center aisle and some deacons had to meet you. All that stuff we've learned now, that's not salvation. Those are types. Those are denominational idiosyncrasies and peculiarities, but, but none of that matters anymore. If you need to give your life to Jesus Christ, just say, wherever you are, I'm going to try you, God. And I'm going to do it through your son, Jesus Christ. If there's somebody else there, have them pray with you. Or maybe you ask them, I'm going to try Jesus. Why don't you try him with me? He'll, he'll make your life brand new. So wherever you are, give your life to Jesus Christ. Call the church. Get on the roll. We had two or three people do that this month. People are joining. People who were Catholics saying, I, I want to be baptized. Baptist style. People who were Baptist other places are coming. People who have, have had no religious affiliation have joined up with what Salem is doing because what Salem is doing is what Jesus Christ has told us to do. Nothing more, nothing less. And we're not a society church. We don't care what your pedigree is. None of that matters when the mortician stretches you out. That won't account for anything. But wherever you are, find in the depths of your soul just the ability to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That I'm going to follow you. I'm going to be one with you. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to talk with you. And he'll make it all, all right. God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, God, for what you've done. We thank you, God, for these musicians and the people who've worked with our technology. We thank you for Ken Lawrence, the commissioner who stayed here but went right to the pews. Thank you, God, for elected officials who know who you are. We pray for our president. We pray for Governor Christie. We pray for people who don't mean us well, but, but we know that they are your sons and daughters, and we do not know what it shall be for them, but we're going to pray for them and do our part. God, teach them the right understanding of humility, of love, of forgiveness. Move by your power divine in their lives. Touch them in ways large and small. Touch those who are hungry. Touch those who are homeless. Touch the Senate. Touch the House. Touch the governor. Touch candidates for office. Touch teachers. Keep them safe. And students and principals and those who clean. Lord, we pray for people who pour coffee in the White House but might still be subject to disease and even scorn if they wear a mask. Heal our land, heal our world. And we'll be so ever mindful to give you all the praise and the glory. They're yours. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Brother Victor, it is always good to have you uh, here at Salem. You're always welcome. Uh, your wife uh, is clearly the fairer half of the family. She's, you, you married up, uh, young man. And uh, we're just so 
we're so grateful. Let's, uh, let's, let's throw over to, to, to Victor. There we go. There we go. He and I'll get, I'll get in, the, get in, the, in the picture together with him. Uh, it's always great to have you here. Uh, you got here at 7.30 this morning and, and played around with the piano. Played the piano. You didn't play. I would have played around with it. Uh, and the organ, man. Thank you for who you are and what you are. Um, I hope you have felt the hospitality here. Um, this is a free church. Amen. Uh, and so the usual strictures that you see in churches don't, don't apply here. Amen. Uh, because he who the Lord sets free is free indeed. Is free indeed. Yeah. Amen. Indeed. So thank you, brother. You can take us out of here. You Amen. can do, do what get on the Hammond do, you want to get on the Hammond. Amen. Okay. So just stay with our, our worship service just a little bit longer. He's going to go over to the Hammond. So I'm sure they're going to throw or go wide or go wherever. Uh, over to the Hammond. Hammond's the other. There you go. There you go. Spin back, pivot back just a little bit. Gary Shepard is getting Praise up. Praise the Lord, church. Out of, no, keep, keep the drums in. Keep the drums in it. Keep the drums in the shot. Amen. This is an old hymn of the church. It says, hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. Just want to encourage you, my brother and sister, to hold to his hand. Time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. You've got to hold to his hand, a God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, a God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Everybody say hold. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand, build your hopes on things eternal, hold to God's unchanging, can we say that again church, hold on to his hand, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand, build your hopes on things eternal, hold to God's unchanging hand, hallelujah, 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 oh yes, hallelujah, amen. Amen. Amen.